All right, so I will start the session with kicking off, just warming up in terms of talking a little bit about the IoT itself and in the industry, how some of this change is driven. Um, just to get you guys thinking about like the ways we all can contribute towards the next generation of digitization. Because as we talk about our world, how it's changing, it's very much driven by the way things are coming and getting connected to internet, right? And we'll talk a little bit about that. And then we'll go into the actual workshop. A uh, little bit about myself. So I'm for Cisco, I'm director of products for DevNet. So for DevNet's uh, product management team. But I think this is where I like to call a little bit more who I am. Just talk a little bit about myself. Uh, feel free to follow me on Twitter. But more interestingly, I'm a maker. Right, whether I'm making fun projects with things like Arduino, or other projects that I'm doing myself, or even simple things like cooking, right? That's also making, right? We all are continuously making stuff in our day life. Um, I'm also mom of a young kid who's a maker, entrepreneur. He has his own startup. Uh, he made a smartwatch, programmable smartwatch kit for kids that he's selling. So got it funded through Kickstarter. And that's the power of this maker ecosystem. And IoT fits very well in that where we are able to drive innovation, creativity, ground up. Even a 10-year-old, he did it when he was eight. He's 10 now. So when even young kids can do stuff like that, that's what makes it very powerful. And this session is all about, I want you to think about just enjoy that session and think about the type of things in your life, whether it's for yourself, with your family, or for your company you can think about doing. So that's kind of what I will be talking about. Last picture, just a little story. So I don't know how many of you are fan of Adam Savage. Uh, and he, uh, so on the Discovery, his uh, show is where my son was a big fan and we got to meet him. So just a little uh, from the last Maker Fair. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but now let's step into a little bit of Internet of Things. This word itself means so many things to different people. And I want to take very quick two minutes to talk about, and the reason why I put this Wikipedia definition here is that it talks about few things, this interconnectivity. Right, and as we are at Cisco Live, networking and interconnectivity, just a big word to be able to think about how the different things are coming online, getting connected, and driving change around us. And whether it's electronics, softwares, or even now you can see like human beings, animals getting connected to internet as well. Right, and not just in the sense of us using our devices, but sometimes pacemakers that are running inside people. The uh, animal stock is very much tagged now for various type of outcomes. So keep those thoughts in mind as you go along. But let's go back where it all started, a little bit history. These are, I will keep getting some fun facts so you remember, take it back when you go home to your uh, environment, talk to your kids or family or office people. It was first a Coke machine, a connected Coke machine at Carnegie Mellon that was created in early 80s. And that's a little picture I found on internet, pretty old. <laughs> but that's what was first connected device, a Coke machine. Yes, that makes perfect sense, right? If you can have vending machine coming up and automatically sensing that you are there and giving you the, uh, the can, that makes a lot of sense. But this has been talked a whole about even in 80s, early 80s, there was uh, the term itself, Internet of Things, was coined. And there was, uh, in the uh, FCC, there was talk about how the environment will change with all these connected devices coming online. The concept further, I think, in MIT, which further at one point became more RFID, right? If do you guys remember when 
RFID was called Internet of Things because now everything has a tag. But it has changed a lot. And that's where, as we think about, I'm pretty sure you have seen this picture somewhere, right? This is a Cisco picture we uh, create. This was this research. This picture came out a few years back, really calling out like it's not one thing. It's like by 2020, you're talking about 50 billion devices getting on network, which is amazing, right? Think about from everything in your house to everything in your environment when it's connected, what are the type of use cases, right? Thinking about the type of things it can do for you. And that is the most interesting piece that I want you all to continue to uh, think as we work on this uh, session. The next one, again, very quick slides that I just want to keep showing for you to have that thought process going. How many of you have heard Industry 4.0? Industry 4.0, right? So if you are coming from a manufacturing or industrial or retail even environment, this is the next thing, right? When they are talking about it's not just the physical system getting connected, but it's the information that's coming on network, how it's being processed, right? And how it's going to big, bring the next big change. And that's what really the power of IoT is. Another aspect of connectivity, this is also, you must have seen a version of this picture somewhere, right? The idea is the IoT is not only, this connectivity of devices is not only changing the industry, the, uh, the way we connect things, but business models, which is directly relevant back to where you guys take this information for your work, for your own career growth, right? So just these examples itself can show you, and this was not possible until we had the connectivity. And a lot of this is going to the next level where the connected car, for example. Think about all the smart connected car. Coming on the connected infrastructure, right? So it's no longer just the, the device itself, but the infrastructure itself knows where that device is and can make decisions, smart decisions for you. And that's the type of thing I want to leave you with. I will put one more quick slide here in this area, but this is most relevant if you are working in the IT organization in, the, in your company, right? From IT perspective also, the change that happened across the board, there was an era which was very much driven by IT. Right, and it's continuing to move forward as the the next round of analytics making it come smart. But also think about the innovation aspect it's driving, and that's where it's driving some of the innovation, which is very much driven by the data, the data that can, is visible to you, the information that you can use to make the decisions for the next steps. Right, how the business outcome you want to drive and how you can use that data to drive those business outcomes. So some very quick data points, these slides I will make available as well, just so that um, this is something you can keep in mind. And this, this one, just some numbers, important slide from the perspective that it shows you from the business strategy perspective. How many organizations, this is the data from um, IDC's research, they studied uh, decision makers in 2015. This was a survey that was done. And from their perspective, some of the biggest call out here was 58% of companies were thinking how they use this IoT thing, right? IoT means so many different things. They were trying to figure it out and say how we use it, how we leverage it in our environment. If I'm an enterprise and I need to make my workspace more smart, what it means for me? Versus I'm an industry, I have a manufacturing show floor versus a retail environment, right? So just thinking about from all those aspects, this is a very important one, as well as talking about the, the industry leaders, which thinks that this is 33% of them, they think that for their own disruption, for their differentiation, they need to go into digitization and drive that their own business with the digital assets. And that's some of the important data here. So 
as we start looking at the potential of IoT, there's two phases of this we have already gone from crawl to walk stage. Right, crawl stage was really where you all have heard of these like Fitbit or Nest. These type of devices were just taking one sensor input, giving you one output to make a decision. The walk stage where now many things and many apps you could connect and build on that, right? So that already is happening now, right? We are seeing really where we are now, this is the run stage of IoT. And as you go into the run stage of IoT, you can really see that the thinking is a lot more how I make it secure, right? Security become a big thing. Now you have so many of connection points for your data and security is big. So as you think about your careers, as you think about your business, keep in mind the areas where people are working or next round of growth is coming from. Security in IoT is huge. The next part which is huge is operational scaling, right? Nobody has today figured out how to gracefully operate an environment where you have millions of devices collecting data, analyzing that data, and making business outcomes for you. So these are the next two areas of hot technology-driven innovation that's going to come. Right? So these are some of the things that I want to leave you with in terms of your career as well as your business growth to noodle on these topics. Think about how they will impact your growth and what you can do differently in your environment. Very quickly, last two, three slides actually, some resources that Cisco DevNet provides. So you heard from Suzy VRVP, there are a lot of learning resources from Cisco. And since this session, I'm not talking too much about those resources. I just want to let you know they are, bless you, available on developer.cisco.com, all the way from connectivity. I'll talk a little bit more into IOX, fog, uh, fog layer, security, as well as application platform layers. Um, this is an area, IOX, you can go to developer.cisco.com under IoT. There's a lot more information about our IOX application building. We will also have three sessions in DevNet Zone this week that will walk you through basic IOX building. Um, and there's some free online sandboxes, so if you are building on those, being able to try your stuff as well. This is another one that I want to point out is smart and connected digital platform. And this is also a resource we brought up just in last few months here. There's a lot of learning um, around the smart connected digital platform from Cisco. So you can go to, uh, online, take a look when you find time. And there are a whole lot of other resources that are available on IoT from DevNet. So with that, I think now we can get into our hands-on activity. I know most of you are waiting for that piece. So this is the time we will start opening those kits that are sitting in front of your desk. We'll share there's that one kit between two people. So six seats in uh, one row. So feel free to find the partner if you don't have. As we talk about, uh, and we'll go step by step here. So. Let me ask very quickly, I will take a pause. How many of you are in the DIY doing stuff on your own? Show of hand. Very cool. So do it yourself movement has been around forever, right? It's not nothing new. We have cool name for it now. That is new. Uh, think about the Apple devices, right? How it started. It was a DIY kit, right? Nobody ever thought of the impact, the way it will change our lives. It got from this DIY kit all the way on the left to a laptop to every device we are using around us these days, right? So it changed the way people look at personal computing. And that's what, as we think about the the DIY movement or do it yourself and using the maker kit movement, it's also about how people, these are the technologies which will drive change. They are just evolving, 
right? People are just trying to play with it, just like the Mac DIY kit was. Someday, a lot of the, the, the technology innovation will also come from these maker movements. And the things to call out, there's a lot of open source hardware, right? Open source software was really popular. Everyone knew about it. Who would have thought about open source hardware a few years back? Until the Arduino started, and then Raspberry Pi, and there's tons of open source hardware now for you to create whatever you are looking to build, right? There are a lot of the fabrication tool. So the way 3D printing is changing the manufacturing, that bigger, that change never happened in the industry. So that's all, as we talk about the industry 4.0, that's a big change. Also tools for you to like be able to share what you are creating, right? So really more keeping yourself motivated, learning what others are doing. And we also have a session later this week about DevNet has also created a tool called DevNet Creations where you can come and share what you are building. So there are tools like that we are doing for each level. And then funding, right? No longer people are looking for big VC firms to come and fund their projects. They can go online, go to GoFund or Kickstarter or any of those community funded sources to get to their new projects. And that's really awesome. And as well as uh, the communities that are coming around it. So just explore that DIY movement around yourself in your communities where you live, because this is the power of bringing the maker from maker to all the way to innovation that can change the world. Right, so I just want you guys to uh, continue to think about it. But from slide perspective, this is actually the last slide on the uh, work-wise here. This IoT revolution is happening as physical things, atoms and bits. So a term, if you want to take back, how connecting atoms to bits, right? And your software, which is bringing the intelligence on top of your physical. So that's how um, to look at the IoT itself. OK, so now we'll jump into the Arduino part of it. So um, you all have these boxes. So why don't I ask you to open the box, the front side of it, where so back side has the little booklet. So take out the booklet, the guide that's there. And then also take out the front side The board that you have in there is a red board. It's not a blue board. The difference, slightly different, blue board is the original Arduino board. A company, and since it's an open source, um, SparkFun, which is making these boards, created a red version of it. And they branded it a red board. So open up your red board. It's really a prototyping tool, right? Very quick to uh, prototype electronics, right? Um, you, uh, as we go, we'll go into the details of the Arduino board itself, but yeah, so before we go there, some fun facts. So who like fun facts about Arduino? So Arduino, the name itself, well, came from a bar in Italy. Anyone from Italy here? Yes? See, our country gave us Arduino. <laughs> and it's named after the king of, uh, Arduino was the name of a king, I believe. Right? Uh, so they were in this bar called Ivrea, in Ivrea, Italy, called Arduino of Ivrea. And these were the two guys, Massimo Banzi and David Merritt. And these are the two guys who created Arduino. This is just a picture of them from last Maker Fair with my son. So <laughs> just a little fun fact about the, the great people who actually build this uh, Arduino board. But here are the components that we'll take out today. So from your kit, I will ask you to take out your red board, a bread board, which is this white thing. Looks like a bread. Right? This one. Um, some of it is connected. If it's not connected on this, that's all right. Just keep it side by side. Bless you. Um, we'll also use these LED lights. And 
and some jumper cables, some resistors. So as we are doing that, taking out, let me ask one quick thing. Hey, um, Alvin, could I have the batteries from, I think Edwin has the batteries. Okay, you'll get it, oh, thank you. There are some batteries you found, a big pouch of batteries. Looks like we lost our batteries somewhere in the transit. <laughs> no, thank you. They might not be working because they are all collected, but try one. So I will soon pass out these coin cell batteries. We are getting them right now. Uh, try see if it works. I don't know if it will. Some of you also might have it in your kit, say, coin cell battery. See if you can. There are more fresh ones coming. So I've not yet. So yeah. So don't worry about any download. So yeah, just hold it for a second. Yes, just one second and I think try. There are more fresh ones coming. These might not be working. So and you you have one? Yeah, try that. Try so take out one LED. Just take out one single LED from your kit. Any color. Any color is fine. And we have more coin cell batteries coming. So we'll try just the LEDs with the uh, coin cell battery. Let me ask uh, again a fun fact or quick thing. So have any one of you played with the LED? I know you have. You have to. You have probably played with kids as well. Yes, a lot of the time. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Ashutosh. So we have these coin cell batteries. Well, yeah, it probably just pass around. Just take one and pass around. Take one and pass around. So if you have your coin cell battery, take out a couple of LED lights, and each of you take battery. You need two. So both of you. Take out some LED lights, some coin cell battery, and try to light up. Just a simple LED. One color at a time, and see if you can add more. Yes, yes. Try more colors, add a few more colors. So as you guys are doing, lighting up your LEDs, any observations? And maybe adding a few more. It does not work, right? Yes. So here's, did everyone got theirs working? Hands up if you have your LED lighted. Yes? Yes? So any observation if you add more? Did you try to add more? Not working? Different options? So one thing to note here, this LED has a long leg and a short leg. <laughs> Anyone knows the difference, long and short? Yes, yeah, so long is positive. Your short leg is negative, right? And simple circuit right there. Very simple, your first circuit with the long leg and short leg. As you add more LEDs, and maybe I will come around and, oh, I have my pack here, okay. Try to add few more and see different colors. And maybe same color and see what happens. Because this, DIY workshop is all about trying things because as you will try, you will learn something new every time. Any observations so far? Some colors don't swirl. Yeah. So which two colors which are having problem mostly if we have red and blue, right? But if I take out others, 
and just have blue by itself. It works, right? So color-wise, and this is a fun activity to do with if, like, if you have young kids, make sure, buy a few LEDs, few coin cell batteries, do it at home. This is, the, the fun part is, the colors. We all remember our rainbow colors, right? Red on one side, blue on other side. Just the voltage they use. And red takes a lot more that if you try to get red and blue, these batteries are not powerful enough to have both of them come at the same time. So fun pack, a little bit just to try out, but now you made your first circuit. As we did that, the next step we are going to do um, is now let's try with resistor, right? Because what we are going to do is in next step, we'll try to connect our LED through our power source in our computer. So before we go there, I will tell you a few things very quickly to make sure that your computers are ready. And if not, we can get you other um, set of computers. We have a computer on each table which is preset. So in case yours is not ready, we can have you working on those. So resistors, as you have two different type of resistors in your kit. What I will ask you to do is have both 330 ohm and 10 ohm resistor, one of each out on your table. Actually, it's a good idea to use these two. <clears throat> Let me pass on these. I think what you are doing is great, like just putting all your components on there. So just we'll pass out these packaging material <laughs> for you to. I don't think we have any more packaging material. That's all right. Yeah. No, I, we can use these to just put on top, like just to just yeah, look more slippery. OK. Sorry, guys, those were the only one. So uh, now the next thing we will start doing is before we connect our Arduino board into computer, We'll talk a little bit about the other components. So the difference in between these two resistors is just the amount of resistance they create. One creates more 330 ohm resistance versus other 10. So we'll use both as we get to our project. Um, let's talk very quickly about breadboard. So how many of you know how to use breadboard? Have you done? You have, looks like few of you have done the activities on breadboard. The important part about breadboard is to see how the circuit current flows through it. Right? So before we jump into our next activity, let's look at the breadboard. And as you see here, so these two side, they are the columns, the two columns on both sides. And by design, breadboard is split into two sides, just to give you more space to put your components. Right? Um, on the column, there's one positive and one negative. Right? So current is flowing positive, neg negative in the vertical on that. Each of these rows, whether uh, from 1 to 30, they each have current flowing horizontally. Right? So the way you create your circuit, and you will, so if in your books, if you take out your books, page 17. Page 17 is where we are. What we are doing in page 17 right now is this shows you the flow of power, right? So you can easily see. Breadboard has a metal strip underneath it, right? So on top of the plastic, you can stick your component wires whether they are jumper wires, like these wires. So these are the jumper wires that we'll use. Or your LED or resistor, they all have these wires that can go into your breadboard. right? So um, 
what we are going to do before the next step is to use our breadboard and Arduino board to light up our LED. Right? Um, for that, we are using the page 19, the blink LED. That's the very first e exercise that we will be using. So, so we'll get to the activities in a minute, but we are f the very first one we are going to do is the blink LED. Yeah? So do you all have your components out? And you actually don't need to screw the thing on top board. You can just put it on top, and that's easy. Right? Otherwise, it takes a lot of time to screw the board on. So who knows why breadboard is called breadboard? Any answers? This is what people used to do before they had simple things like our current bread breadboard. They will steal a breadboard from the kitchen and hammer all the components on top. So this is what the circuit used to look like before compared to the circuit that you are going to make right now, which is the very first one, blink LED. So um, let's use our, this exercise only needs one resistor for the first one. We are going to use a 330 ohm resistor because the power source for our light will be our computer. We will use the ethernet cable to power our light source, our LED, which means there's a lot of power, right? What's that? We will use that red wire that you have, but if it's a USB, yes. So before we go into the USB, let's first get our circuit ready, and then we'll go on to the computer. So let's put our circuit. Uh, so I think best way to do that is look at page 20. Does everyone has page 20 open on their book? Yeah? Look at page 20. It's, it uses one LED, one resistor, couple of jumper wire cables, right? And, and yeah, that's it. The pin we are using here. So for Arduino board, this example uses pin 13. So make sure your LED is connected to pin 13, because that's the input we will use. There are two other important um, pieces to note here. And actually, let me skip through this slide. OK. So other than pin 13, your power source for this is the 5 volt. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we are doing this circuit. And then you are using this diagram. So breadboard, as you know, this is a positive and negative side. And the current flows here horizontally. Yeah. Yes, so jumper, yeah, so you don't have jumper cables. OK, let's give you some. Oh, no, so that's the resistor. And then we can give you some jumper cable. Oh, is it? OK. There's one on the front which you need it. You need some jumper wires. Yeah, there. Yeah. Do all of you have the jumper wires, every component in your kit, right? And do you guys need one more kit over here? Yeah? 
Okay, let's let's give you one more kit over there. And, yeah. Oh, you're okay? Are you sure? Okay. 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 So, does everyone has their circuit ready or need few more minutes for the circuit? So if you are done with your circuit, you can open your laptop. There are laptops on each table which have the device drivers preloaded. Uh, yeah, Arduino, you know, that's correct. And then port, you need to see the USB serial. So I will talk about that in a minute, just, yeah. Mm -hmm. The 330, yeah, so this is the golden one is, yeah, this is the 330, yeah. So just a clear distinction if you're resistor-wise. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll get to it in, in a minute, yeah. So um, for those of you who are looking for resistors, the one with the golden color on the pouch is 330. This is like little yellowish golden color. That's the 330. The other is the 10 ohm. So are, are we all ready with the circuit, ready to go on the next leg? Okay, so for the laptops, password is Cisco123. Cisco, only Cisco? Only Cisco, okay, thank you. So did you, uh, password. password, yeah, try. That laptop might see if Cisco works, Cisco works? So does every one of you have a laptop that's working? Do you, yeah, let, let's give you another laptop. I have another laptop. You got it? Okay, that's good. So you guys will need a laptop. So here's the laptop. Yeah. That looks okay. Yeah. So once everyone logs into the laptop, let's go into our Arduino ID. And we'll talk a little bit about Arduino. Before we connect our wires. So who here has played with Arduino before? I know some of you, right? So you know the IDE pretty well, right? So here's the Arduino IDE. So your computer would have something like, so from applications, if you go, You should have an Arduino installed already. So if you are on a Cisco laptop, go open your Arduino IDE. Is it opening now? Is everyone into the Arduino IDE? Is anyone in the room who does not have their ID open now? Okay, you need, you're still downloading? Okay, cool.
So I'm going to go back into this to show you a little bit more specifics about the IDE. As you have your IDE open, let's talk about very quick few functions in it, right? So on the top, the verify is just to compile your code, right? So before you load your code, it's always a good practice that you compile it. Just verify that all your commands, all your mostly is the syntax error that you will find. Right, so just make sure you do that. The arrow that's pointing right, that's your upload code, right? So as you are ready to upload your software to your Arduino board, that's the most important step that you will do. Mostly, that's the function you will use. There is the new function if you want to open a new file, new sketch. So little note again on Arduino, each program is called a sketch, right? So these, this was done by two designers who created Arduino board in Italy. And of course, what makes perfect sense to call your program sketch, right? Like you are putting a sketch together on paper. So that's what the, the each program is called. The save function is very helpful, which is the number five there, which is the not normally looks like a download button, but that's a save in here. And then um, the other one which is very useful is this message window. So number nine, this is where you will see when your code is getting compiled, so it's say compiling, your wire is not working? That, that code, okay, so IDE, for those of you who are on the computer, Cisco computer, right? Um, Search for Arduino, are you in the file already? Okay, so stay on this, this is good. If you are in the Arduino ID, you are good. Everyone on the Arduino ID? Yeah, okay. So once you are there, there are few things you need to do to make your code work. First, you need to select the right board. So go under tools, board, are you guys good with the board and, oh, it's all, already blinking. See, this is awesome. But we'll play more with that because yours is preloaded, looks like. No, this, did you upload just now? Awesome, awesome. We have a group already having their LED blinking now. Yay, that's good work, guys. The next thing you need to do is make sure your port is right. So does everyone has their serial port connected? Yeah, so once it's done, connect your red USB and looks like you have your LED working as well. So, um, for board, you are Arduino, you know, for port. No, no worries. Yeah, yes. No, not Bluetooth, the serial port. Yeah, so you need the serial port. That was it. So now once you upload, all good? You are having some upload issues or? Yeah, so. Yeah, so blink LED. So now let's talk about the code. The sketch you are going to use is called blink LED or circuit one. Circuit one in your sketches is, so let me show you on Arduino IDE. You should have a sketch folder on your laptop already there. Does all of you have a sketch folder? And you need to search, select circuit one for this particular piece. Is it circuit one? Circuit one on your, are you able to find circuit one? Looks like it's already blinking. Any? 
So once you all have your LED blinking, it's still uploading. So try another LED. Try another LED. Yeah, so positive needs to connect to the positive. So if you look on here, right, your po positive should be along with where your Yeah, longer goes here, and shorter goes in the same row as your resistor is, right? Uh, yeah, this is, this should be right. Okay, let's try it. So as you all got to your LED blinking, is everyone there? No? Tell us. So. Yeah. Okay. Let let me explain. One, if it's not blinking, so yeah. So folder, if you go search here in downloads. The sick code guy. This one, circuit one. Yeah. Are you able to find the circuit one? So under your downloads on your f computer, yes, upload you upload it. Okay, okay. Try another LED. Oh, positive, positive and negative. Or tr sometimes some of these LEDs might also not be working. Try another LED. So one of the things to also note here, Arduino board itself shows you few things. It comes with uh, pre-built knowing whether your circuit is uploading or not. Right, so in your board, do you see um, there are three lights, the one light which is on by default, which is this on light, a green light. Does every one of you have green light on your board on? Which is good. Now, it also has these three lines, three lights, uh, receiving, transmitting, and number 13. So receiving and transmitting should work when you're uploading your code. So are those RX and TX lights uploading? Yeah? All good? Everyone good with their first blink light? No, not yet? OK. So yeah. So it, OK. So uh, your board is correct. Uh, you know is correct. Uh, this is Blink LED. OK. So uh, is there some syntax error? Yeah, it's OK. Yeah, it is uploading. Awesome. So actually, you have reached the next activity already. So once you have your LED open, do you know how the light is blinking? So let's look at the code a little bit. Yes. So what code is here? And let me go in full screen in. Yes. <laughs> See, that's the reaction I get every time. It is available on any store, and I can I will give you links. I will give you. Cisco does not have SKU, unfortunately, but we'll have to create now. <laughs> so let's look at the code a little bit. So Arduino IDE is written in Java, but uses a mix of C, C++. Right? It's like, so if you are a C, C++ coder, then you know exactly how to do it. To be honest, I'm not a coder. I learned it with my son. So that's my learning on Arduino. So point is, you don't have to be a coder. You can learn it. <laughs> the, the simple thing here to note in this code, 
right? All the comments tell you everything, every single thing. And that's the easy part about Arduino is there's existing libraries, existing code that a lot of people have created with every single thing written in the comments for you to use, right? In this one, the biggest thing to note is, so you have defined your integer, which is you have pin 13. That's what you have input pin you have identified already. That's one thing you can try to play with, right? Change your pin, change def, def, which pin is your input pin. But the other thing, which is other than pin mode as output, the interesting piece is to play with the time delay. Right now, your LED is defined to have a thousand millisecond of delay, right? So play with this delay piece and see if you go reduce the delay to 500 millisecond or increase the delay, how is your LED changing color? So will, is it fast, slow? Play with the code a little bit if you have not already done. And what we are going to do is once we have that going, we'll maybe, depending on what you feel, take a very quick break so that you guys can grab some snacks or some if you want. Or we can continue to the next activity, whichever uh, next step. <laughs> Which is good. I like that because I know you, so this is a very interesting activity. Once you get in, into it, you want to continue to do. And the next circuit that we are going to work on is a photoresistor. So yes, go ahead. Yes, that's where we'll do next activity. We will plug in a sensor. Great segue into the next question. So, are we good? Yeah? Yeah? So, did you change your pin in the circuit as well? So, So were all of you able to play a little bit difference? I see some of you are adding more LEDs. Right, that's another one good one to do, add more. And then you need to add more loops in your program. Right, for each. Or you can, or you can you add them to the same loop too. Yes, that's even simple. So do you guys need a few more minutes to Try a few more things with the first circuit. Yeah? Five minutes more with the first circuit. Play with, maybe add a few more lights. And I can come around, take some cool pictures of <laughs> LED lights. So this simple activity, think about it now from the, um, the real use case perspective, right? You just turned on a LED, which is blinking based on the light, right, the delay on there. But think about, can you create a night lamp out of it? Maybe have more LEDs. And those are the real life examples to think about how this workshop can help you create the next level of activities. Yeah? I'll let you play around a few more. Yeah, you want to play more? Are you guys good? Do you want to, oh, you are adding the second. Are you adding the second one? Yeah. In the same loop? You can add it in the same loop too, yes. So maybe the power, the resistor is too strong. Yeah, the or try like two yellow. The blue uh, is normally lot takes a lot more power. Or green would probably work. Try green. <laughs> so this is like the those little things that you we forget, right? The amount of power different LEDs take. 
I see a lot of you are adding more lights in the same loop. So number six. So the next exercise, those of you who are ready to move on to the next activity, we are going to go on number six. Yes? Which is the circuit six where we will use a sensor now. The input in number six is a photoresistor. So we'll go to page 41 in your notebook, if you are ready. So is everyone ready to go to the next circuit? Yeah? Show of hands if you want more time. You are ready to go? OK. <laughs> go ahead with your circuit six. For those of you who are still looking to play with the existing one. So in circuit six, one of the things that we'll take out is a photoresistor. And here's how the photoresistor looks like. It's a small piece. You probably, and let me actually put up the picture here. This is what you are looking at, photoresistor. It looks like this. It should be in one of the boxes you found, right? Yeah, in one of the pouches, yeah. Did you guys find the photoresistor? Sometimes, because after workshop, people keep it in different pouches. If not, let me get you one. Are you able to find it? Not yet. Were you guys able to find a photoresistor? Uh, you are playing with that? No, so that's, yeah, that's a temperature sensor. <laughs> yeah, found, you found it? OK. <laughs> Who does not have a photoresistor? You need one? Yeah. You also need one? OK. Uh, let me just make sure. These are the small. No, 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 no. Of course, then you have to copy them. OK. Let me find. Uh, who else does not have a youth? One, two. Will you find? Yeah. OK, so there are boxes up front. So how many? Uh, one, two, three. Do you guys have a photoresistor here? You found the photoresistor? Okay. OK. And do, did you find the photoresistor or no, not yet? OK, so let's see. Oh, there it is. This way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There. 
uh, so photoresistor is five and six. And the legs are equal, in, so you don't have to worry about. So we need two more, right? You, he got one, right? Did you get one, sir? Yeah, you have a photoresistor, right? So there's, you, you need one, and they need one. So let me see, meanwhile, while we are looking into, yes, sometimes they are like in okay hi there yeah yeah feel free to join so there are few seats you can uh, join there and then uh, actually one of these kids should be good right uh, yeah, I haven't looked at it yet, but sure. yeah you, you can come over here thank you So as you guys are just joining us, what we are doing is a Arduino activity. We have gone through our basic first uh, circuit. We are going through the second circuit, but what we can do is um, have you guys started with the basic LED project, right? And then um, did you s sign up and do you have the, the downloads already on your computer? You don't, didn't download, okay. So, um, maybe Ellen, you can help them with the download. And then let me find the, uh, there's one. There it is. Yeah. Okay, you got one, right? Oh, you need one, right? Sure. You guys have one, right? Yeah, okay. So. Look. You guys are already set, done with your photo register. Let's talk about that now. So wh what do you think, like how is the, the resistor, what's happening there with the light level? Right, so what's happening is like it has created this analog uh, voltage distributor. Let's talk about that a little bit. And what it's doing is it's restricting the flow of light because a uh, photoresistor is an analog resistor, right? So we need to have analog read and analog write for it. And in order for that, what it's doing is after it reads the current, it transforms that into the voltage it's reading based on the light. So if there's no light, there's a lot more voltage because the resistor now the voltage is flowing. If there is light, that means there's low voltage flowing. So that's what the, the code, as we'll go through that in a minute, because we can play with the changing of the code there. And looks like you guys are already uh, ahead doing that. So is everyone able to get their photo resistor connected? Are you guys need a few more minutes on that circuit? Ten K register? Yeah. Let's see. There it is. <laughs> Are you able to upload it? Number six, okay. So uh, did you download the sick guide? So I I will uh, Okay, let me um so did you just download it here? So go and go to sparkfern.com backslash sick code. Okay, but the code from the first one was uh, already here. Yeah. So maybe I, uh, go back to where you were. Yeah, so some of the sketches are here. Sketch. Sketch, sketch going to sketch. 
okay. library library hmm. okay sorry i am not able to read your uh, uh, sketch complete let's see this what is it no uh, just search for uh, actually go back to where you were just now sorry yeah folder yeah so under where the same where this blink is that's the same folder it is so go back to the folder above it which folder it is yeah so actually these are just from the you'll have to download sig code yeah just download this one yeah yeah page 9 just download that because that is the latest so were you guys able to download the okay just Uh, so Arduino c dot cc, Arduino dot cc. Let me, um, yeah, just tell you on the page here. So you go here to download the your Windows yeah. IDE. After you download this, download drivers, device drivers. Okay. Yeah, and this is the uh, link to download the device drivers, right? And after you download device drivers, just download this. Yeah, those three things to download. So we are on this activity. Right, this is the circuit you all are building. Hi there. Are you interested in joining the Arduino activity? Okay. So Okay. So No worries, no worries. We'll find seats. So There's two seats here. Yeah. Yeah, it would be good like to just join join the groups which are sorry. I will come out. Hi there. You're looking to join? Okay, so let's do this thing. I will have you maybe come in the front. There are two chairs here. And let me get you a kit. Or do you want to just join with them? Or like you guys are already ahead, right? So let me get you a kit here. Okay, so for those of you who are just starting, very quickly, I will let the rest of you, I think are still middle of your circuits, I will let you go through that. Very quick for those new teams which are just starting. If you are using your computer, which you'll have to use for programming, there are three things I want you to do. Take out the booklet from behind the kit. So did you guys get a kit, extra kit, or? Let me give you an extra kit. So take out the Arduino, this SIG guide behind from your, yeah? So that way they can start on their own. You are already ahead. Uh, uh, yeah. Circuit six. Yes. So yeah, the kit is behind, but I will ask you to download a few things first. OK? So. For those of you who are just starting, go to your book in Arduino Kit. First thing you need is download the Arduino IDE, which is on page four. 
page four, download the Arduino IDE. You can go to arduino.cc. There's the link right on top. And that's the first thing to do is download the IDE. Second thing is device drivers, which is on page five. And then the third thing is SIG code guide. This is the SparkFun Inventor Kit guide on page nine. Yeah? OK. So start with downloading. I'm taking a picture with all of you. <laughs> so those of you who are on the circuit six, oh, I see some of you are also having more fun <laughs> connecting. Awesome. <laughs> Keep playing. That's what it is all about. <laughs> Do you all understand the circuit six? How is it working? No? Not working? OK. So uh, yeah, so let's go check the tools. Yeah, so it's connected to USB. That's good. That's good. Um, Compiling, you know what, let's do this. Let's compile it first. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, the, these circuits are a little flaky always. So the drivers, these are more prototyping tools. Yeah. So what we are planning to achieve is, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 no, absolutely. What we were talking about is how the DIY ecosystem is changing, right? So we are learning about using a prototyping kit. Arduino is a proto electronics prototyping kit, right? It helps you see the how input and outputs, and that's the piece I want to talk about in this circuit, right? By doing basic hands-on activity, how you can take the input from, so these are electronic sensors. Now, the sensor could be in real environment, a, in your room or some other facility or exactly and then the output right so the that, so there is input the photo sensor is the input here yeah yeah right now that is true so we'll get to the next stage on this activity as well yeah so circuit six. So if you go and look at the circuit, so so not not here. So so go to the folder here. All right. Let's just open it. Oh, can you open the downloads folder? My hand is yeah. The downloads folder. Right. And just open this. Go s this folder. So there are a few more folks, and there are two in the front. Thank you. Yeah. So this is the code. Circuit 6. Awesome. Sure. Yeah. I'll upload this code. Input from the photo. photo yeah. Correct. Correct. So in those of you who did the circuit 6, there was a question in the back as to what's the input, what it means for us, right? Wh why this is this activity, right? So in the circuit six activity, we added a input. That input is the photoresistor, right? So photoresistor is now, and I know some of you are on ahead on other programs as well. Think about the sensors around us. And photoresistor is an example of an input 
a sensor input that's changing the light. So in real life example, in your room for a night lamp, you can think about that again based on the light, it's changing your output, right? When it's dark, it turns on your light. When it's, yes, tell, tell us. <laughs> I can't solve that problem. <laughs> so we need the glasses. Too. <laughs> so uh, did you upload? Okay. Yellow was not working. It could be. So those are the things. Let me just check the circuit. Looks like everything is right. Do you want to unplug and plug it back again and try? Yeah, sometimes the, these components can be faulty. <laughs> if not, we'll get you another. Hi there. Sure. Yeah. Dev IoT starts at like 11, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this activity for them. Hi there, we are doing an Arduino workshop and then uh, just talking about IoT and how sensors, right? So more hands-on activity on that one right now. Are you guys interested in st doing or is? Oh, okay. <laughs> understood, understood. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> So you guys are able to get to your photo? You can see the change, right? So one of the things for those of you who have your photo resistor working, try to play with the numbers. This is where it gets interesting, right? So um, the, the two values we are looking at, the zero value is when there's more light coming in, when the digital read or analog read in this case is zero. You can't see the port, port on OK. So that's the problem. Let me come and help you there. OK. So what you need to do is probably just disconnect, close this ID, and now reconnect. Sometimes this is what happens, the system. Let's see, this time if loads up, it recognizes the port. Yeah. So for those of you who are, we are still in time. Yeah, so don't worry. The port-wise, some of the things that you are experiencing is, if your port is not showing up, serial port, make sure you can unplug your USB or restart your IDE. Did it show up this time? Not yet. It's still loading. Oh, now plug it, yeah. Do you want, there's only one USB on this? Uh, you know, sometimes restarting. Do you guys have that laptop working? That laptop should be working, right? Yeah, let's try that one. <laughs> so the problem with these boards is the Sometimes the device drivers are not easily recognizable. <laughs> yes, come on. Yeah, so they got it working. So you can see the, 
distance. So if you cover the light, the photoresistor, right, the light goes down. Dims. So, yeah. How to test it? So the one thing you can also do is play with the numbers. So the range is 300 to 800. That's the best range to try and changing the colors. Yes. So actually, let me show it on the screen there for everyone. So you are, yes. So, so if you in the bottom, right? Those are just the definition, right? So if you, um, so this is for automated. What we are doing is the manual tune, right? Yes. So manual tune, just change the zero and two like. 300. Zero, yeah, and 1023 to 800. So let's play that range and could you take some pictures as well for later or on, on my phone? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Why it's just giving you the, yeah. So let's talk a little bit about the program itself for the circuit six. I know some of you are doing other circuits. That's all right. Um, but did you understand everything in circuit six, how the digital read and write or analog read and write is working? Did you guys understood the, the program itself? Yeah? So one thing too important to play there is just understanding the light levels, right? So for the, the photoresistor, it's reading the light le levels at the range of 0 to 1023, right? But the write function, digital write that we have, it can only take the range from 0 to 225, to, sorry, 255. So we need to create a mapping from that broad range of 0 to 1023 to 0 to 255. So that's one of the functions that you see here. There is a mapping created right here. Other than specifying your pins, you have also specified the light level map for this range. And that's, that's one thing. But the other thing to remember is, that for this to work in so much light right now, we have enough light around us, right? Um, 300 is the dark side. So if your lower number instead of 0 is 300, and your upper number is 800, that's the range you are getting the maximum light coming through. So if you read this comment here, Let's talk about the range of light. So one thing you can do just to play with it is change the light a little bit and play, try to see how it works. So if you're mapping light, in this case, I try to change it to 0 and 900. And this is in the manual tune. So you need to come 
to the 144, row 144, and try to change the lower limit, light level lower limit to 300, and upper limit to 800, and see if you can see more dimming. You can make it totally dark. If your total zero range is maybe 300 or a little above 300, you can totally turn off your LED. So if you try the zero limit, just change the bottom limit and change it to 300 on the auto manual tune. Yeah. Yeah. So you can cha see the change in the level coming right there. And if it's a little higher, like close to 300, you can see totally dark. You, your LED can be turned totally dark. So any questions? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, try try that. Uh, so, so not ch don't change the integer. So keep the integer 1023. That's for how much the value for the read is. But if you go scroll down, go to row 144. Uh, yeah, so if keep scrolling down. In the manual tune right here, um, right? So r right here change the light level to 300, 0 to 300. Uh, yeah, so this zero number, just make it 300. Oh, okay. And the 1023 number, you can change it to 800. Right? Yeah. So that's all. And just, uh, yeah, upload it. Yeah, see how, if you see the change. Were you guys able to get to the base circuit? Hi there. The ID. Port is port is not connecting. Okay. So, what what one version of Windows is it like Windows Seven? Yeah, there are some issues with the Arduino. Um, let me get you another laptop. Looks like this is. Yeah. They have left. Yeah. So you can actually use this one. It's already loaded. Windows 7, they have known issues with the Arduino ID. Hi there. Did you just come in? OK. Do you need any help? OK, sure. Go ahead. <laughs> So we'll take another 15 minutes to continue to play with our circuits. And then we have another exercise, which Ashutosh in the room will be taking, um, is to do our dev IoT activity. It's another tool. Now, that's an application that Cisco DevNet team designed to help you quickly prototype your IoT environment. And that will not use Arduino, but if you want to continue to play with these, Take a few more minutes, and if you need more time, let us know. Looks like you guys are having so much fun with it. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> Do you mind if I take a picture of your circuit? <laughs> You need to have it light up, right? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you are from Roger. <laughs> okay. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> Let me capture your advertising a little bit more carefully. Because <laughs> the lighting. All right. <laughs> nice. <laughs> And you are going through the temperature sensor? Yeah, I got it working. Nice. 
you can see the cooling down yes yes oh yeah now you are <laughs> making it hot <laughs> and you guys are with more more lights which is always cool <laughs> So which one are you guys playing with? Adding? Okay, nice, nice. How is it going over here? What are you guys working on the next? Okay, awesome. <laughs> See, that's the fun part, right? <laughs> Okay, we'll create one certificate for CCIOT. Okay, we'll create CCIOT for all of you. <laughs> that sounds like a fun certificate. Yo, water would be good, yeah, if there's water. Thank you. Hi there. Hi there. <laughs> Just looking. <laughs> Are you guys starting after 10 minutes? Yeah. Okay, all right. There are some drinks right over here as well, like if you are looking for cold drinks. <laughs> Looks like people are having this one is, that's the whole idea, right? The fun part. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Any more kits? Okay. Okay, let me. Yes, there's one right here. There's just need the LCD display right here. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So you all are ready for your CCIOT certificate now? <laughs> okay. So we'll, we'll be doing next activity in 10 minutes, around 10 minutes. So if you want to take this time to finish up, wrap up the Arduino boards, or do one more project, just time-wise. So, so was it fun or well, it was fun? So you will suggest this to everyone else, this activity? Yeah? Awesome. No, we need to, yeah, we need input from you. So to be honest, to see what more we should be doing. Were you able to get to the, yeah, is the port still? Oh, let me come help her. So this one already has the port connected. So, okay, let me suggest. Okay, so it's not connecting the right port right now. So let me do this thing. I'm going to disconnect it. In fact, these guys left, right? Uh, I have no idea. Looks like. Because this laptop was having some port connectivity issues as well. <laughs> I know your luck <laughs> looks like. Actually, let me just do this thing. <laughs> Every computer you touch yeah. looks like loses its port today. <laughs> do you want to just plug it in there? OK. So now let's go to two. Okay. See, this one found the port. Okay. Now which circuit do you get? Okay, so there's one. Yeah. Yeah. So
So next one we will do a Dev IoT workshop, which is an online tool from Cisco itself, and that you can use to prototype your IoT app very quickly. And so uh, that would be the next activity we'll be doing. You can get connected. So as we wrap up this session here, um, just a few quick notes as um, Ashutosh is going to be coming up and talking about the a prototyping platform that we build within DevNet team. It's called DevIoT, and it can help you quickly prototype IoT apps for your own environments. So we'll go through that activity. Um, I'm going to pack this up from here. But uh, just a very quick round of show of hands. Was this a helpful activity for what you do? Yeah? Qu good, good to know. And then would you like to know more detailed workshops like this in future? Yeah? Looks like all of you <laughs> are interested in that. So thank you very much. Thank you. And I will be here in the room supporting Ar uh, Ashutosh after this. But Thank you very much for coming for this Arduino workshop, and let us know any input you have. I'm right behind in the room. Thanks, everyone.